Right, so let's talk Formula One again, ladies and gents, and uh, two young Brits who uh, have a very responsible job for McLaren and Mercedes-Benz, respectively. Please welcome Gary Paffett and Sam Bird. I, I like the young reference. I'm very proud of that, actually. Did I say young? You said young, which I did, I'm very I didn't impressed with. I didn't mean to. <laughs> Middle-aged, did you mean? Or? Yeah, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Welcome, guys. Good to see you. Um, you perform a really... I think people perhaps don't realise what an important role you perform behind the scenes because Formula One simulation is a vital cog in the wheel, isn't it, for success? Absolutely. You know, I joined uh, McLaren at the end of 2005 when we were testing every single week in 2006. So I had a, a full-time schedule. We were out at, um, at, at Magna Corps, at Jerez, at Barcelona, at Paul Ricard, every week doing tyre testing, engine testing, component testing. But from then, it's, it's become less and less. And now, um, OK, it's slightly different this year, but last year and the last few years before that, there was no in-season testing at all. So that's... You know, all the work we did on track then had to be translated to, to do it somewhere else, and we moved it into the simulator. So where, as when I joined McLaren, the simulator was just a, a backup thing to test some wacky ideas the engineer had before we made them. It's now engineers with wacky ideas. Yeah, yeah. Really? We have a lot of them at McLaren. Yeah. Some some of them some of them have been very good actually. The F duct, one of the wacky ideas, actually became quite successful. Um, so, so it's now turned into a full-time development tool for, for everything from these wacky ideas and future projects to uh, doing the setups for the certain specific races and the race drivers go in and do their own setups before the race weekend um, to a, a driver actually being in the car on the Friday of a race weekend helping out with the testing that's going on at the circuit. So you're sort of like a stand-in Jensen Button, aren't you? A stand-in Jensen button, yeah, really. Sort of behind-the-scenes Jensen, okay. aren't you? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, he takes all the glory, you do all the work. Ex yeah. I, th I think it's like that yeah. anyway. And you're, you're a sort of stand-in Lewis Hamilton. He takes all the glory and you do all the work <laughs> at Mercedes. Yeah, I suppose you could say that. Um, it is. It's, it's full-on back at the simulator, uh, Brackley or, or uh, certainly what Gary does as well. There is no testing at the moment currently in, in Formula 1. Okay, there is a little bit this year, but... Um, you know, I wish I'd been born 10 years earlier so I could have done a little bit like what Gary was doing out every week in the car and stuff like that but you know, it is an integral part of the team now um, a lot of the pre-event work is done by myself and by other simulation drivers at Brackley and uh, for the last two years I think I've been working on the 2014 project That's amazing isn't it and you were kind of doing work behind the scenes for Michael Schumacher too weren't you uh, when he was racing yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, Michael tended to not use the simulator a great deal at all, um, but that was uh, that was him. He, d he didn't really get on with it, to be honest. Didn't really feel like it was uh, necessary. But we've brought the simulator on an awfully long way from there. I still think uh, McLaren are on top of things in that department, along with maybe Red Bull. But we're getting there. We're getting closer to to their kind of technology. Bigging you up there. Yeah, putting the pressure on. Um, you have to completely recalibrate the simulator when you have a big rules change, don't you? Particularly with the sort of 1.6 litre turbo engines we're going to and all the energy recovery systems for this year. Uh, you do. I mean, the simulator is, is built up of a lot of models. You know, we have... Um, <coughs> it's all co computer components. Um, we have a chassis in the simulator, which obviously you sit in, but that's just to make you feel like you're in the right place. You know, there's no, nothing actually that works in there with regards to the setup of the car. But you have your, uh, your suspension and your chassis model, which has all the flexibility and the compliance of the components in there as well. You have your wind tunnel model, which gets put in for the aerodynamics. You have the model of the engine, which basically is the torque and the power curves and, and also everything like the, the exhaust blowing you get and, and the, the throttle application and the throttle map, which gets put in. Um, and then finally, you have the tyre model, which gets put in and altered quite a lot. And you put it all together and you have a you have a race car, so it, there's a lot of components. And as you say, with the new regulations, we've had to build a completely new engine model and aerodynamic model and everything, so. That was very boffin -y. Is he right? Yeah, he's, he's correct. Um, <laughs> the great thing about a simulator as well is that if, uh, if we want to make a change, it takes two minutes instead of an hour, you know? So if we want to do something wacky with the engine, those guys might be able just to reel off those changes really, really quickly and try crazy stuff that you would never be able to do in, in real time in a real car. So when are you guys next back in the simulator then? I'm surprised you've got the time to talk to me, frankly. Well, uh, so not surprisingly, uh, 
that we've got another driver that is in the simulator quite a lot right now, Mr. Magnus. Oh, yes, yes yeah, because so he's new, isn't he, to Yes, so to I, Formula I, I'm, I haven't got quite as much as a normal January, but uh, I've, I've been in there already. I was, I was in on the 7th of January, first, first driver in, looking dedicated, keen. Um, and I'm not actually back in until the 28th of January, so because I have a DTM test next week, and, uh, and then um, I'm in the first day of the actual testing at Hareth to try and see how they're doing and, and try and get some correlation going. Without giving too much away to your bitter rival here, uh, how did it feel first time out in the sim with the new it, bits? It felt horrible the first time out, and um, it still feels very horrible <laughs> the last time I drove it. I was very pleased so, to hear that. Um, no, it, it feels very different. You know, it, it's over the years the cars have evolved, and they've evolved to to now the amount of downforce we have in the cars we had in the cars last year was incredible. You know, the amount of downforce they were producing, especially on power with the blown downforce it was incredible the amount of the amount of grip you had in the corners so a lot of that's been taken away especially the blown downforce has been taken away uh, so you don't get any extra downforce when you're on throttle so the exit of the corners the traction out of the corners is a lot worse than we've had before um, the the torque that we have with this new engine is four or five times what we had with the v8 so the amount of torque you have coming out of low, medium, and high-speed corners is a lot more than we've had before. So the cars move around a lot more, the traction is a lot more difficult. So the cars are a, a lot more challenging to drive than we had before. And the thing is with the simulators, although they're very realistic, the, the sort of oversteer and feeling that is, is the hardest thing in a simulator. It's very hard to replicate that. That's the virtual reality uh, taken care of. Let's talk reality. Fantastic season for you uh, in GP2 with Russian time. Uh, Constructors' Championship victory, lots of wins for you. Happy with how it went? Sorry, what did you say at the end? I didn't hear you, Henry. Did you not hear me? No, no. I did. I couldn't hear the last thing you said. Oh, I was just saying, how do you think it went? Are you oh, happy with I mean, your performance? Yeah, I, I was happy with my performance. Um, I don't think I could have done anything more uh, for the season. I don't think I made too many mistakes. I was, looking back at it, extremely happy. I think five wins in GP2 is, is a good haul of wins. Uh, shame I didn't win a Monza. Then I would have had a Silverstone, Monaco, Spa, and Monza. That would have been a good four, but uh, just missed out on that. Um, yeah, I, I will look back on 2013 with great fondness. Uh, particularly uh, with a new team in a, in a very competitive arena where the cars are all supposed to be the same. Yeah, going into it, I knew it was going to be quite a hard project uh, taking a team that were good, but not necessarily title challenges and trying to turn it into that. Um, the engineering staff at Russian Time were, were very good and got their heads on top of things very, very quickly. Uh, I won my first race in Bahrain, which was round two, and, and went from strength to strength, really. Um, what about 2014 from a racing perspective for you? Um, well, I've just come back from Daytona. I'm going to be doing the Daytona 24-hour race, as well as Sebring and Petit Le Mans. That's the, currently the only thing that I have signed. Um, I hope to have a meeting soon with Toto to discuss uh, what I can do within the Mercedes family. Um, there are a lot of other opportunities out there that I'm exploring as well. At the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's about time now where I'm a, a fully-fledged professional racing driver. Um, so, yeah, fingers crossed it's going to be another successful year and, you know, it might be new challenges. And uh, Gary, should we just gloss over last year and, and, and talk about this year? I had one amazing race win, so yeah. there was a high point. Yeah, well done at the yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, apart from that, it was a very challenging season, so... You know, we didn't have a car competitive enough to, to win constantly and to challenge for a championship, but also at the few opportunities we had to, to have a race win or a good, a good race, um, we made a lot of mistakes and, and we cost ourselves a lot of points. So it was a very frustrating year. And I think apart from it's not just a case of building a new car and going quickly this year, we need to make sure we don't make them silly mistakes. And, you know, when you've got a team that's, that's that experienced and, uh, and is making mistakes, it's very difficult. So we all need to make sure we push harder and stay focused and, and try and uh, get back to winning form because in 2012 I mean every year I've been in DTM I've had I've had two two disappointing seasons so it's been a, a pretty good record and I'm quite used to doing well so I want to get back to doing that uh, good luck with it uh, thanks for talking to us uh, Gary Paffett and Sam Bird ladies and gentlemen thanks fellas thank you thank you